In 2016, I started shooting film. When I started shooting film, I was using Fuji Superior 400 and Kodak Ultramax 400 simply because they were easy to find and they were affordable rolls of film. Now that it's 2024, prices have changed over the past eight years, and I wanna figure out, is it still worth it to shoot Kodak Ultramax 400 in 2024? So in 2024, I am hard pressed to find Kodak Ultramax with 36 frames in a single roll for under $9. Some places you can find it for about eight and a half, but most places I'm finding it for at or above $10 a roll. In 2023, I shot a total of three rolls of film. Not very much, but it's all I really got done. All three of those rolls of film were Kodak Ultramax 400. I paid about $30 for all three rolls of film and I paid about $50 for developing and scanning. That's a total of $80 to shoot roughly 60 to 70 images. So let's see if it was worth it. For all of these images today, I was using two different cameras, the Minolta X570 in the Canon EOS Rebel G. I started out my first roll of film in the Smoky Mountains this summer. Right over my birthday, I popped in a roll into the Minolta X570, and I was just recovering from a surgery, so I wasn't walking around at all. I didn't travel much this year, and so this is what I was able to capture. If you've seen any of my previous videos, you've seen me do an in-depth comparison on Kodak Ultramax 400 and Fuji Superior 400, as well as a couple other rolls of film, so I don't need to go into too much detail about the color and the way this film looks. It's classic. I feel like at this point in 2024, everyone pretty much knows what to expect from Kodak Ultramax. One of the things I love about Kodak Ultramax 400 is the gold tones that I get. It's not quite the same as Kodak Gold, but it's warmer than the Fuji Superior and something I lean more towards in my photography. And this shot right here is one of the reasons I love shooting film. A simple light leak over the house overlooking the mountains. Not the greatest image, not the most beautiful image, but something tangible exists in this image for me because of that light leak and it takes me back to that moment. So after my time in the Smoky Mountains, I ended up going to New York City a few different times this year. And while I was there, that's where I shot the majority of my rolls of film. I don't know if I'm just a terrible photographer or I just didn't take enough images this year, but a lot of these photos shot on the Minolta X570 ended up having blown out highlights and were slightly overexposed. And I did the best I could with the light meter not being 100% accurate, but overall I love the glow that I got from these images. Some of them are washed out, but when the light hit just right, the image turned out great. I've shot a bunch of different rolls of films over the year, different film stocks, and I keep coming back to Kodak Ultramax because I love the specific texture I get from this film stock. So in my previous video, I told you guys about this photo. This is an image I took on my iPhone, an image I loved. Probably my favorite image I took all year. That being said, when I took that image, I pulled out my film camera to take what I thought was the exact same image. And here's how it turned out. The composition is not at all the same. There's a big difference between them, but it's one of those cases where I do love this image on film, but the digital image just has that charm for me that I unfortunately didn't capture on this Kodak. And when I was taking this film, there was not a ton of light. I was on a moving boat, my shutter speed was slower, so that's probably playing into the softness of the film image. But ultimately, when I got my film back and I saw this image, I was a little disappointed because I love the image I got on my iPhone and was really hoping I got the same thing just with that film charm. Overall, it's not a bad image. I really like it, and I might throw a black and white filter over it, which is a sin for film photography, but 
I feel like that'll make it look a little cleaner. But all in all, these photos from the boat do have this old nostalgic feel to it that the image on my iPhone couldn't capture. And so now I am using the Canon EOS Rebel G with the Ultra Max 400. So it's still the same film, but I'm using a pancake 40 millimeter lens, which is a more modern lens. And a lot of these images are a lot sharper and you can really tell the difference between the two cameras, even though the film stock is the same. And if I'm being honest, I usually love the like dreamy and creamy look that vintage lenses give, but I really enjoy these images from the Canon more than the Minolta on this trip to New York City. And my last trip of the year was to West Palm Beach, Florida. I was there doing a speaking engagement with Team USA and I snuck away during the day when I had some free time to go to the beach. This is my favorite image from the trip. There's a lot of negative space in it, and that's something I've really loved to utilize in a lot of my photography is negative space. I feel like it traps a subject in a corner or in a side or down low, and it's something I really enjoy to have in my photos. I know technically it's not the golden rule and it's not all this structure that makes sense, but it's something that's pleasing to me. And this image is an example of that where there's just a lot of sky, but you've got the edges surrounded by these palm trees in this building, and it just feels nice. And so those were all the images I took in 2023, all using Kodak Ultramax 400. So is it worth it to continue buying Kodak Ultramax 400 in 2024, now that the price is much more expensive than it was back in 2016? For me, the answer is yes. While it costs 30 plus dollars just to get three rolls of Kodak Ultramax now in 2024, I do still think it is worth it to shoot that film stock. It's right in line with the prices of Fuji Superior 400, and I think they're very comparable film stocks at that price point. I personally like Kodak Ultramax a little bit more, but given the opportunity, I would still shoot the Fuji Superior because there's not much, if any, of a price difference. If you're really looking to save money shooting film, I would recommend going with black and white film stocks. I've made a video in the past about how I don't personally love to shoot black and white film, but I've seen a lot more images over the past year that have really inspired me to want to get back into black and white and try shooting it again. Overall, shooting film in 2024 is not a cheap thing to do. The cameras are getting more expensive, the film's getting more expensive, and it's never really been a super cheap process but it is a process I believe that is worth investing into. For this video, I got three rolls of film that cost about $30 and developing and scanning the images with a lab cost about $50. All in all, I spent about $80 to get these images and it's not necessarily for me about the final result, but it's more about that process. I love that analog tactile feel of putting film in a camera, taking those images, rewinding it, sending it off, and having that anticipation to see what's actually on those rolls. If you're looking to save money, get a Fuji digital camera that's got the film simulations, but if you wanna do this as a hobby and you just love the process and are able to be patient with it and are okay spending $80 to shoot three rolls of film, I would highly recommend the Kodak Ultramax 400. And if you're a baller, get the nicer film stocks, Portra 400, whatever, but that's not me. 
But I would love to know what you guys think down in the comments below. Do you think Kodak Ultra Max 400 is worth it in 2024? Or is there a different film stock that I need to check out that might be a better option, more cost effective and looks better? Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe for more photography videos in the future. Again, I'm not a professional. I just do this as a hobby. I just love taking pictures and sharing it with you guys. So thanks for taking the time to check out my channel and I'll see you guys next time.